the Ebola virus, or the Ebola hemorrhagic fever, or the Zaire strain of the Ebola hemorrhagic fever, is a bioweapon patented by the American Center for Disease Control. Currently, this genetically modified monster is being used to depopulate West Central Africa and allow American and other hegemonic military powers access to that entire region in order to exploit its resources. It is a simple time-saving device. With Ebola, the world's great empires don't have to come up with an excuse to invade each African country separately. Deploying this bioweapon opens the floodgates for all the military and medical interventions that any superpower could hope for to flood into Africa. Oil, of course, is a big reason for wanting troops in West Central Africa. Vast deposits of oil have been located in the waters off of the Liberian coasts, and Nigeria is the 11th top oil producer in the world. Sierra Leone is the world's largest supplier of diamonds, but the workers are now on strike. Striking is a dangerous tactic in diamond mining in Africa because the fat cat owners can just shoot you and replace you with someone else at the drop of a hat. Since Africans are not dummies, they quickly realized that the only people that seemed to come down with Ebola were those that had received treatments or injections from the Red Cross. And for some time now, Liberians and Nigerians have been kicking the Red Cross out of their countries. So why do you think that Obama sent 4,000 ground troops, with no medical background and only four hours of training in infectious diseases, to Ebola-plagued Africa? Could it be to secure the oil resources? Or is it to stop the Union strikers in the diamond mines? Or is it to force the Africans to take vaccines? Or are they to become victims of the Ebola virus themselves, later to be sent home to infect the domestic populace? Maybe all of the above. In the U.S., the Ebola virus is being used to create the appearance of a pandemic in Africa which is raging out of control. Because of America's open borders, frequent medical screw-ups, massive U.S.-sponsored immigration, Obama's feigned incompetence and mainstream media fear-mongering, the people in the United States are beginning to feel threatened. If the mainstream media can pump enough terror into the public consciousness, this fear could be used to install medical martial law, inflict quarantines in FEMA camps, and force Ebola vaccinations at gunpoint. <laughs> Time for a little history lesson. In 1967, a hemorrhagic fever broke out simultaneously in Germany and in Yugoslavia. It was dubbed the Marburg virus. It was thought to have been carried by lab monkeys from Uganda, although numerous shipments of monkeys from the same dealer were sent simultaneously from Uganda to the US, Italy, Japan, Sweden, and Switzerland with no virus. This prompted an investigation which found no evidence that the disease had occurred in the animals or natives in Uganda. Therefore, most experts concluded that the reservoir of the Marburg virus must be in the native habitat of the monkeys, although nothing could be found there either. Coincidentally, just across the border from Uganda in Zaire, existed the infamous Otrag base. This is a known CIA petri dish for lethal hemorrhagic viruses. Experimentation founded jointly by convicted arch-global war criminal Henry Kissinger and Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, the CIA's Dr. Death. Were the monkeys infected by the Lytton Bionetics rhabdovirus experiments going on at that time? This hypothesis may be highly likely since the United States Center for Disease Control, an independent corporation and a priority organization of the CIA, controlled by the Rockefellers, launched a massive campaign to sabotage the international effort to locate the real source of the Marburg outbreak. The CDC developed a bogus testing procedure that fed the international scientific community massive misinformation during the first critical years after the infection occurred, right at a time when interest in the outbreak peaked and useful studies could have taken place to track down the real infecting agent. Ah, well. The next outbreak occurred in 1976, simultaneously in Zaire and Sudan. This outbreak had two major results. It produced 537 cases with 362 deaths, and caused President Mobutu of Zaire to scramble back under the control of the U.S. after flirting with Russia and Chinese communism, and balking at the imposition of forced Catholic icons in public schools. Foolish Mobutu. Since the 1970s, the Pentagon has had a biomedical research center in the Kenema Government Hospital in Sierra Leone. Remember the diamond mines? Their interest in this type of virus is because of the extremely high mortality rates and its stable nature, so it can be put in an aerosol form as a potential sprayed biological weapon. The Kanema Government Hospital is one of the main epicenters of the 2014 outbreak. Incidentally, this hospital was constructed by Doctors Without Borders, which was headed at that time, coincidentally, by David Rockefeller's son. Just a coincidence. In 2007, the National Institute of Health gave Tulane University a $3.8 million grant to develop Ebola detection kits, and in 2009, they received another $7 million and began to develop a new emergency board at the Kenema Government Hospital. As you might suspect, to do this kind of research, it is necessary to have a quantity of the virus on site. And it's quite a coincidence that a major outbreak occurred right after $10 million was pumped into Ebola research in Africa in a matter of just two years. The Kenema Government Hospital had to be shut down and stop its research because angry locals started throwing rocks at the hospital, believing that Ebola was a conspiracy to infect the population. Now why would they believe this to be true? Why would first-hand witnesses living in the infected countries claim that there is something fishy going on? Why is a plant pathology expert under the impression that this virus has been developed by the U.S. at the Kenema Government Hospital? Do they know something? 
Maybe that is why the hospital actually had to be guarded against locals who were attacking the place, because they believed it was making them sick. At least eight Ebola AIDS workers have been murdered by the civilians of Guinea. They believe so firmly that these workers are responsible for making them ill. An Ebola is real campaign is in full force in Africa to convince people that they are not being infected with the virus through vaccines, that it is a naturally occurring full threat. Most Africans don't buy it. They know where the disease is coming from. To further convince the public, formaldehyde has been dumped into the water supplies of some villages to produce Ebola-like symptoms, including death in the population. And then there is the untimely death of Glenn Thomas, the Director of Coordination for the World Health Organization, an expert in Ebola. He knew that Kenema manipulated the tests and infected people with Ebola, and was said to testify that the outbreak was anything but out of control. Unfortunately for the public, but not the vaccine industry, he died when the Malaysian airliner MH17 was shot down. What bad luck. In the United States, the Department of Homeland Security officially has taken over the plans for medical martial law and the imposition of mandatory Ebola vaccines. Ebola promises to be a goldmine for the pharmaceutical industry, but the government and the media must either scare the public into taking the vaccines voluntarily, or do it the old-fashioned way, force and violence. The bottom line of things to know is, don't be afraid. Don't take the vaccines. Don't stand for martial law. Please send this video to everyone you know. And for more information on how you are being manipulated by your beliefs, pick up a copy of Belief Magic by Dr. Paul Marco. Free your mind, and the rest will follow.